حسین شہید سورا وردی حسین شہید سورا وردی واز آ پاکستانی بریسٹر اینڈ پولیٹیشین ہی سرڈ ایز دا پرائم منسٹر آف پاکستان فور نائنٹین ففٹی سکس نائنٹین ففٹی سیون اینڈ بفور دیت ایز دا منسٹر آف بنگال فور نائنٹین فورٹی سکس نائنٹین فورٹی سیون ان بریٹش انڈیا ان پاکستان سورا وردی ریوڈ ایز ون آف دا کنٹریز فاؤنڈنگ فیسٹ اسٹیٹس مین ان بنگلہ دیش سورا وردی از مین ریمبرڈ ایز دا مینٹر آف بنگلہ دیش فاؤنڈنگ لیڈر شیخ مجیب الرحمان ان انڈیا ہی از سین ایز اے کنٹروورشیل فگر سم ہولڈ ہم ریسپانسبل فار دا نائنٹین فورٹی سکس For which he is often referred as the butcher of Bengal in West Bengal in India. He is also remembered for his performance as the Minister for Civil Supply during the Bengal famine of 1943. After it, political career of Hussain Shahi Suravardi. Suravardi was credited as a pioneering modern political organizer in Bengal. He created 36 trade unions among sailors, railway employees, jute and cotton mills workers, rickshaw pullers, car drivers and other working class groups dominated by Bengali Muslims. Deputy Mayor of Kolkata 1940 and 1926. So, Sohra Vardhi joined the Sawaraj party. Led by Bengali Hindu secularist C. R. Das in 1923, he became the deputy mayor of Kolkata in 1924. After the death of Das, Suravadi turned to Indian nationalism. He emerged as leader of the Bengal Provincial Muslim League, the provincial wing of the Muslim League which his father Zahid had earlier helped to create in 1920. Bengali Muslim Groups Suhravardi formed the several Bengali Muslim political groups including the Kolkata Khilafat Committee during the 1920s amid the dissolution of the Osman Khilafat and the Turkish War of Independence. The Bengal Muslim Election Board, the United Muslim Party and the Independent Muslim Party. Bengal Legislative Assembly and World War II In 1937, Suhravardi was elected to the newly formed Bengal Legislative Assembly. He was appointed as Minister of Commerce and Labour in the Cabinet of the first Prime Minister of Bengal, A.K. Fazal Haq. In 1940, the Lahore Resolution was adopted by Indian Muslim leaders calling for the creation of independent states in eastern and northern and western India. It was unclear if the resolution implied a single state covering the two Muslim majority regions of India or multiple states. Suhravardi served as Minister of Civil Supplies in the Cabinet of the second Prime Minister of Bengal, Sir Khwaja Nazimuddin. According to Arthur Thomas Kennelly, Suhravardi blamed black marketers and the central government in New Delhi for the Bengal famine of 1942 during World War II and claimed he worked tirelessly on relief. What a lot Wevel, however, believed that Suhravardi was corrupt, that he siphoned money from every project that was undertaken to ease the famine and awarded to his associate contract for war housing, the sale of grain to governments and transportation. On the other hand, Indian author Mother Sher Mukherjee laid major responsibility of the famine to British Prime Minister Winston Churchill who wanted the ration for war efforts only and had refrained the U.S. aid to Bengal. Suravardi was further accused of practicing a score head earth policy to counter the Japanese army's advance in the east and supervised to burn thousand fishing boats to block any potential movement of invading Japanese army troops. These measures aggravated starvation and famine and the relief was only ordered when Lord Wevel became the viceroy using the Indian army to organize relief. Or by that time the winter crop had arrived and famine conditions had already eased after millions had earlier perished, Kolkata, the Hindu-owned newspapers had become very critical of his role and the Bengali Hindus held him directly responsible for the famine. Prime Minister of Bengal 1946-1947 During the 1946 general election, Suravardi led the Bengal Provincial Muslim League to a decisive victory. The Muslim League's biggest success was in Bengal, where out of 119 seats for Muslims, the BMPL won 113, so they were supported 
by the league's chief uh, Muhammad Ali Jinnah to assume the premiership of Bengal. Sir Wadi's cabinet included himself as Home Minister Muhammad Ali Bogra, as Finance, Health and Local Government Minister Sayyid Muzammuddin Hussain as Education Minister Ahmed Hussain as Agriculture, Forest and Fisheries Minister Nagendra Nath Roy as Judicial and Legislative Minister Abul Fazal Muhammad Abdul Rahman as a Cooperative and Irrigation Minister and Abdul Ghafoor as Civil Minister Direct Action Rates Sir Wadi tenure as Premier saw the Great Calcutta killing the 1940s in the Muslim League called a strike to press its demand for the creation of Pakistan. The strike degenerated into brutal and widespread Hindu Muslim raids in which thousands were killed on both sides. The raids were seen by some as the last nail in the coffin of war for Hindu Muslim unity in British India. Trouble started on the morning of 6 August. Even before 10 o'clock, police headquarters at Lal Bazaar had reported that there was excitement throughout the city, that shops were being forced to close, and that there were many reports of bravels stepping and throwing off stones and brick bats. These were mainly concentrated in the north central parts of the city, like Raja Bazaar, Kali Bagan, College Street. Kalotola and Bura Bazaar. In these areas, the Hindus were in a majority and were also in a superior and powerful economic position. The trouble had assumed the communal character which it was to retain throughout. The leagues really began at Okitroni Monument at noon exactly. The gathering was considered as the largest ever Muslim assembly in Bengal at that time. The meeting began around 2 p.m. Though processions of Muslims from all parts of Calcutta had started assembling since the midday prayers, a large number of the participants were reported to have been armed with iron bars and lattes. The numbers attending were estimated by a central intelligence officer reporter at 30,000 and by a special branch inspector of Calcutta police at 50,000. The later figure is impossibly high, and the Star of India reported put it at the 1000. The main speakers were Sir Khwaja Nazimuddin and Chief Minister Hussain Suravardi. Khwaja Nazimuddin, in his speech, preached peacefulness and restraint but spoiled the effect and flared up the tensions by stating that till 11 o'clock that morning, all the injured persons were Muslims and the Muslim community had only retaliated in self-defense. The special bar of Kolkata police had sent only one shorthand reporter to the meeting with the result that no transcript of the chief minister's speech is available, but the central intelligence officer and reporter was a frantic borrower's brief was reliable deputed by the military authorities agree on one statement. Not reported at all by the Kolkata police, the version in the formal report. United Bengal In New Delhi on 27 April 1940, Sura called a press conference to demand an undivided independent Bengal. Sura Vardhi made an impassioned plea for the setting aside religious differences in order to create an independent and divided and sovereign Bengal. He opposed the British government's plan to partition India's most populous province. He was supported by the Governor of Bengal, Frederick Poros, Sarat Chandra Bose of Indian National Congress, Kishakra of the Congress. On 20 May 1947, a five-point plan was outlined for a free state of Bengal, echoing the legacy of the name of the Irish Free State. The plan was based on a confessionalist structure with power sharing between Hindu and Muslims. It mirrored some of the confessionalist practices adopted in French Lebanon in 1926, where the position of president and prime minister rotated among the Muslims and Christians. The five point plan stated that on the announcement by His Majesty's government that the proposal of the free state of Bengal had been accepted and the Bengal would not be partitioned. The president of Bengal ministry would be dissolved, a new interim ministry would be brought into being. Consisted of an equal number of the Muslims and Hindus, including scheduled caste Hindus. But excluding the Prime Minister in this ministry, the Prime Minister would be a Muslim and the Home Minister a Hindu. 
pending the final emergence of a legislature and a ministry under the new constitutions. Partition of India On 20 June 1947, the Bengal Legislative Assembly met to vote on the partition of Bengal at the parliamentary joint session. The assembly decided by on a 20 to 19 votes that it should remain united if the, it joined the Continental Assembly of Pakistan. Later, a separate meeting of legislators from West Bengal decided by 58 votes to 21 that the province should be partitioned and that West Bengal should not join the Constitutional Assembly of India. In another separate meeting of legislators from East Bengal, it was decided by 168 votes to 35 that the province should not be partitioned and 107 votes to 34 that East Bengal should join Pakistan in event of partition. Communal violence broke out across India, especially in the Punjab and Bengal's Nokhali district. Sohrabadi traveled to Nokhali with Mahatma Gandhi to restore order. Gandhi and Sohrabadi also had deliberation in Kolkata after the transfer of power on 1450-1947. Sohrabadi continued to remain in India for a few years where he attended to early members of his family. He eventually settled on in the Dominion of Pakistan with residents in the federal capital Karachi and the provincial capital Dhaka. His cousin Begum Shasta Surabardi Ikramullah called for Pakistan Constitutional Assembly to convene in Dhaka as East Bengal was home to the majority of Pakistan population. Awami Surabardi joined the Awami League, a party formed in 1949 to counter the erstwhile ruling Muslim League. Surabardi emerged as the centrist leader of the Awami League, while Maulana Bashani represented more radical leftist factions. The Awami League was often allied with the center left Kishuk Praja party of the AK Fazal al Haqsarabadi chief Pratigi in East Bengal was Sheikh Mujibur Rahman to whom Surabadi delegated political responsibilities. Law Minister of Pakistan Surabadi was appointed Law Minister in 1953 in the cabinet of Prime Minister Muhammad Ali Bogra. He was in charge of drafting Pakistan constitution. One of the highlights of Surabadi's political career was leading the United Front campaign during the 1954 East Bengal election, which voted the Muslim League out of power. Leader of the opposition At the federal level, Surabadi served as the leader of the opposition in the parliament of Pakistan in 1955. His opposition was bolstered by the landslide victory in East Bengal in 1954. Sur Surabadi as Prime Minister of Pakistan from 1956-1947. In the the Awami League formed a coalition with Pakistan Republican Party to unseat the previous government. Surabhadi became the fifth Prime Minister of Pakistan and the second Prime Premier under the 1956 Constitution of Pakistan. Surabhadi was known as a pro-American politician. He also cultivated pragmatic ties with Communist China. Surah supported the American-led Southeast Asia Treaty Organization Center Treaty Organization. He was not keen on non-alignment which was strongly pursued by neighboring India. Surah the toured the United States was hosted by President Zahar at White House and met with American movie stars in Hollywood. In one place, Surah were the address issues of nuclear energy, foreign aid, utilization, food policy, the one unit framework and building up the military. He is strongly pro Western foreign policy was opposed by Bengali radicals led by Maulana Bashani, who called a dispute in the Awami League. However, Surah was elected as president of the Awami League. His cabinet included Firoz Khanun and Abdul Mansur Ahmed, among others. Policy of One Unit Initially, promising to review the One Unit framework in 1950s constitution, Prime Minister Surawati later backtracked. At the National Assembly, Prime Minister Surawadi faced pressure from provincialists over the one unit. Thus, Pakistani provincialists wanted to restore the brief with four princes of Sindh, Punjab, Lochistan, and North West for entire province. Large rallies were held in West Pakistan against the one unit. Prime Minister Surawadi, however, did not pay attention to the issue. While West Pakistan is also subjected to the one unit for renaming East Bengal as East Pakistan. Opposition among the ethnic groups to one unit was stronger in West Pakistan. 
another issue was joint electorate surabadi is one eight and you were unable to enter the joint electorate in 1932 election pakistan provinces were held under the separate electorate system of dividing seated parliament among religious groups in accordance with the colonial era communal award abolishing the Joint electorate was a key demand of the Awami League at the National Assembly. The Awami League initiated constitutional reforms to restore the joint electorate system but faced opposition from the Muslim League. Sohrawadi established the Pakistan Atomic Energy Commission. He appointed Dr. Nazir Ahmed as its chairman. Sohrawadi supported the Atoms for Peace initiative. Sohrawadi also released funds to improve a nuclear swimming pool reactor from America in 1956. In 1956, Prime Minister Surabadi halted the National Finance Commission program to allocate tax free revenue equally between National and Pakistan. Surabadi relied heavily upon USA to the country to meet food shortage and asked the US President to ship wheat flour and rice on a regular basis to Pakistan. In East Pakistan, there were reports of another horse of a mine in which wheat potatoes and rice were being sent from the U.S. and West Pakistan in Fauji Foundation to East Pakistan on a regular basis. The central government led by Swarabadi focused on the implementation of the planned economy. Relations with the stock exchange and the businesses community deteriorated when he announced distribution of the 10 million CIA aid between West and East and establishing the shipping corporation at the expense of the West Pakistan revenues. Mass religious strikes broke out in West Pakistan against his economic policy in major cities of Pakistan. Eventually, leaders of the stock exchange met with President Mirza to address their concerns and issues. Uh, the phrase friendship to all, Malays to none, which later adopted as Bangladesh foreign policy. Surabadi is also considered to be one of the pointers of Pakistan foreign policy aimed, drafted, and Asset towards excessively supporting the United States and their cause. A policy that was pursued by the successive administration on 10 July 1950, Prime Minister Surabadi paid an official visit to the United States where he met with President Dillard Eisenhower and accepted his request to lease out an Air Force base to the United States Air Force that would be in use of the signals intelligence purposes against the Soviet Union. The 1960 U-2 incident severely compromised the national security of Pakistan when the Soviet Union eventually discovered the base through interrogating its fleet. In return, the United States distributed $2.142 billion in shape of giving the supersonic F-124 style fighter and M-48 Patton tanks and dispatching the assistant group to the Pakistan military. So, however, this party, the Bami League, spilled over his signing of the U.S. military pact with Maulana Bashani leaving to form the National Awami Party. Prime Minister Surabadi was invited by the Soviet Union for an informal visit, but he declined. In 1956, Prime Minister Surabadi became the first Pakistan Prime Minister to visit China. Surabadi's India policy was eight times critical. He demanded a fair share of water sharing. On transboundary rivers, Surabadi visited Afghanistan and believed to work for regional peace, nuclear instability. So they also visited Japan and felt that the East Asian country was modeled to emulate in development. He addressed a joint sitting of Philippines Congress during his express port for CETO and continued to call for decolonization. Resignation of Hussein Shri Surabadi. Surabadi short lived premiership came to an end. And he resigned under pressure from President Skandar Mirza in 1956. Surabadi was arrested by the martial law government after the 1958 military coup in Pakistan. While in jail, he wrote to his niece Samla Soban on the occasion for her wedding to Rahim Soban, calling Samla preternaturally transcendent intelligent. It was the story of Hussain Shri Surabadi.